I wanted to give another sermonette for young, the young people here. Uh, and, and my wife said, well, if you n name some of them, they might get embarrassed. So I'm going to say the, the unnamed young people, including, including Dan over there, because sometimes he, uh, he incorporates himself uh, here in by reference, makes a remark about that. So, uh, but the rest of you can listen in. Listen in. I had a delightful interaction with a family member a few weeks ago uh, uh, on, on Telegraph, and uh, this person made a, re uh, a remark about uh, some people being on the left and being on the right, and, and wondering about, about how, you, how you be in the middle, how do you, uh, she actually wanted to know about how do you find the middle. And, and I had to uh, uh, think about this, I thought this is a, this is a great question. And, and it led to, a, I think, a, a really a cogent answer for her, but also then it led to a sermonette. Uh, because uh, we want to uh, be careful in the church uh, about how we uh, relate to uh, matters of public policy and, and the, the general chaos around us. You know, uh, we are cautioned uh, about extremism. Being extreme seems to imply that there is uh, a more desirable and less extreme way of looking at things of conducting yourself. Uh, should anyone seek to be the opposite of being extreme? You in the back corner. Uh, should anyone uh, seek to be opposite of being extreme? Not being extreme left or extreme right, but extremely in the middle. Possibly being a moderate. I mean, moderates are always praised. Uh, a radio talk show host used to joke about a person who was a moderate and he was in an, a uh, busy uh, office building and had to get on the elevator. And he asked, uh, he, he asked the, uh, everyone in the elevator where they were going, and that's where he wanted the, what floor he wanted to go to. So that he needed someone else to tell him what to prefer. Well, this is kind of silly. You know, a moderate didn't know what he wanted. He looked to others to tell him what opinion he should hold. God wants us to know what we prefer. God wants us to know uh, what opinions we have and why we have them. Now being young, you're still forming your beliefs. Uh, if you believe uh, what we commonly hear, you think that people are only on the left or the right. Uh, you may hear your parents in the car talking about so-and-so is a person on a certain side of the political spectrum. Now I hope you're finding out that the human experience is far more complicated uh, and thankfully so. So let me reframe this a little bit. Let me change the, the, the way that I'm talking about this somewhat into something different, but to the, but to the end goal of trying to explain this. Uh, if you wanted to make a great meal, you know that it should include some different foods that each contribute to, to the uh, nutrition in supportive ways. You don't just serve a plate of meat and nothing else. Uh, you have some nice mashed potatoes, some gravy, a green vegetable, maybe a small salad, uh, a dinner roll, and then also some roast beef. The, room, the food has to be at the right temperature. Uh, it should be uh, positioned well on the plate so that you don't end up with uh, stew, uh, I guess. Um, you know, and each serving should be carefully uh, uh, considered and sized, proportioned, right for you the right amount of salt. You know, the meal is not just a gallon of vanilla ice cream and a quart of chocolate syrup and a, and a sturdy spoon. That would be extreme. So, you know, you're, you're, you're striving for the best overall combination that gives your family or guests a loving hospitality and nutrition as well. And a good meal has multiple dimensions uh, that each work toward the goal of making the meal enjoyable and nutritious. So what am I reaching for with that analogy? So to show you that there are many uh, things in our lives that are really not valued on a single line as if you're seeking the middle. We don't uh, talk about how nice the lunch was only in terms of how salty it was. Apart from driving down the middle of the road or sleeping in the middle of the bed so you don't fall out if you have a bad dream, uh, you know, life is full of times when you must seek the best not just the middle, the best, taking all things into account as you know them. Learning to take the time to weigh each factor 
is part of being mature. It is part of seeking to be the best person that you can be. But what does God say about this? What is the important spiritual lesson? Uh, God does not look at things left, right, conservative, progressive. He doesn't. He looks at things about being measured as being righteous. Is it towards righteousness? Is it away from righteousness? Is, does it affirm righteousness? Does it deny righteousness? Uh, if we look in, in Psalm 19, and I'll read it, Psalm 19, starting in verse 8, The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening your eyes. Fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. It is timeless. Uh, it doesn't change. The ordinances of the Lord are true. They are righteous together. More to be desired than gold, they are truly more precious than diamonds. Yea, much finer gold, sweet as honey and the honeycomb. And I can tell you, the older I get, for me personally, the more precious, the more sweet, the more satisfying God's truth has become to me. Uh, it seems many people today complain to, about a society where they think there is no justice and no peace. And yet they reject how God defines justice. They reject how God defines peace. They reject the way, the only way, that a society can be just and peaceful, which is for every person to be committed personally to act justly based on God's law as they understand it and always seek peace in their dealings with others as God tells them to, of course, but when you reject God, what have you got? But all of these things are complex. They are all attributes that cannot be put on a line, left to right, right to left, anchored at the center to avoid the extremes. They are like facets on a gemstone, and I'm sure you've seen diamonds that have been cut nicely, or any kind of gemstone, or pictures of these things. God likens His place on the earth as a mountain. The first mention of the mountain of the Lord is in Exodus 3.1, where God called Moses, using the burning bush as bait, kind of curiosity. What is this? Well, and the last uh, mention is prophetically in Isaiah 30, verse 29. A mountain must be climbed to its peak. It always can be approached from any side. You know, dimensionally, a mountain is not left-right. Uh, it, it is three dimensions. So the peak is always up. So uh, in earthly terms, when you seek the Lord by ascending His mountain, you are seeking to climb an object of multiple dimensions. And it certainly is not just right-left. It is metaphorical for all the many dimensions of the human existence. That ascending the mountain of the Lord, you must ascend or climb towards the attributes that are important to God. And so what are some of these attributes? There are several lists in God's Word. You can probably think of some from your own Bible study. And plenty of examples of His servants, His people He called and people He praised, like Moses and David. Uh, in another case, God selected, you know, as part of attributes, He selected Israelite, uh, Israelite men that He would use in battle for how cautiously or carelessly attributes, how cautiously or carelessly they each drank water from a stream. Now, I, I went on the net and I said, okay, what are the attributes of godly, what are the godly attributes? And there's all kinds of websites that list godly attributes, and, and most of them are informative. And so I would call them composite lists from Scripture. There's uh, discipline and self-control, someone worthy of being respected, able to explain his beliefs. So you have to know what you believe and be able to explain, and making sure that you hold beliefs that are well-founded, that are well-reasoned, that you understand why you hold them, that you're gentle with others, that you avoid arguing, that you respect your parents, you respect others, not greedy, showing generosity. Uh, like I tell my wife, you know, if I had two apples, I would share one with her <laughs> as she's fixing dinner for me from her garden. Manages his personal space, is, poorly orga is personally poorly organized. Excuse me. You don't want to be poorly organized. You want to be personally organized. Careful with what, they, what that person says and how, and how they say it. 
loves good, returns from evil. But above all, I would say, adding to these lists, above all is faith. Now that, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and so on, but those flow from already having faith. These attributes flow from knowing God, knowing God's law, knowing the lessons of Scripture. In other words, the, 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 the pinnacle of this, the, the top of the mountain, are godly attributes, and the other attributes of your life that you evidence to others, how you interact with others, and how you conduct yourself, flow from your knowledge and your relationship with God. These are all godly attributes. When it comes to, uh, and they come when a person loves God and loves his way of life. Now, when a person makes a conscious decision to seek to practice these values because they know they are God's, uh, they are going up to the mountain of the Lord in a metaphorical sense. Now, someday we will really go up to the mountain of the Lord when the King of Kings returns to the earth. And even then, you know, all the time in our lives, in, during the day, in our thoughts and actions, we will metaphorically go on up to the mountain of the Lord. This is what it means to put on Christ. In many ways, all these attributes are just various forms of spiritual truths. Jesus tells us that the truth sets us free. Uh, the, that at the core struggle for every human, whether, uh, uh, whether to move towards the truth or away from it, uh, to embrace the truth uh, in all its forms or to embrace things that are less than the truth. And you could say the very thing about righteousness, to embrace righteousness or to embrace things that tend to degrade or denigrate righteousness. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the light. And he came to set all humanity who ever lived free. The highest form of freedom is being free from death. God only gives that gift to those who love him and those who are committed to his way of life. Now, we frequently uh, sing Psalm 96, uh, hymn, hymn 96, that has a chorus with the following words, Oh, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. You can hear the music, can't you, in your ear. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. He will teach us his ways. We will walk in his paths. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. You know, life is never really just left-right. Life is complicated. Many situations you encounter, and certainly the people you will meet, have many dimensions to them and how they uh, interact with you and others. Some people will be agreeable and even beautiful people, uh, beautiful persons inside. They will evidence love and respect. Other aspects of that same person might not be so pretty. We are like this in unique ways. Uh, we all have a good side, and some sides of us are things that we need to still work on. God wants us to focus to seeking His righteousness, and even that has many aspects to it. When we seek to obey Him in every aspect of our lives, we are symbolically or metaphorically going up to the mountain of the Lord, the highest mountain on earth. Mm -hmm. 